an app focused on reading for preteens. Welcome back to Text to Nation. I'm Fred Fishkin. Joining us is Kate Claremont, founder of ReadWell. Hi, Kate. Hi there, Fred. Well, you've, this app is not available just yet, but it's something that you've been working on as a graduate student in English at Princeton University and have gotten a boost from the Keller Center there. It's an accelerator. Tell us about the, the app and, and what your goals are here. Um, yes, so the app isn't available yet because we just started working on it in June. So it's a very new company and it's a new app. Um, basically, the goal with the app was that through my research in children's literature and other projects that I work on, I got really interested in the e-reading space for kids. And I noticed that there was a really big problem and a gap in the marketplace for preteen readers. Um, and so I was looking at what kids are reading these days, how they're reading, and I also was coming across really depressing statistics about literacy rates, even to the extent that actually 60% or more of adults still read at a high school reading level. There's something um, you know in the US, I forget the exact statistic, but basically I was just looking a lot into this problem of literacy and the way that we're reading nowadays. And when I looked at the products on the market for e-reading, I noticed that a lot of them had AI-generated stories or that kind of material. And they also had a lot of ads or games or distractions on the apps. And so I felt like there was space for a better product for e-reading. And that's kind of how I came up with the idea. Um, so basically the ReadWell product, which I can talk about at, um, you know, in a minute, but um, the ReadWell product offers you know, e-reading, e-books, and it's a curated um, quality library that's curated by librarians, scholars, teachers, and parents, and it's really intended to improve reading levels and the quality of what kids are reading in the preteen age group. It's interesting. I think you found a, an underserved niche here because there's so much out there for little ones who are learning to read, so many different apps and, and programs that parents are are concerned with and uh, kids get a good start perhaps but then when they get to be I don't know 9 10 11 there's not anything that's uh, I guess engaging for them and I guess that's what what you found exactly so that's right Fred so there's a lot of saturation in the market of early reader apps so kids learning to read um, but actually that preteen age group the 8 9 10 11 that you mentioned is when kids become statistically lifelong readers or not. So we wanted to target that age group and really hone in for that age to see if we could offer a product that would get kids excited about reading and that would engage them because the number one reason that kids don't read more is that they can't find material that they're excited about or that is engaging for them. So we wanted to be able to offer really great material through the ebook format. Well, tell us how you went about finding the kinds of books and, and material that are going to get the kids engaged and become these lifelong readers? Um, so basically in my expertise as a PhD candidate in English, I obviously have a lot of knowledge about the kinds of material and that was what got me into the tech side of things because I was excited about children's literature, having researched it and having helped um, teach and been a preceptor for one of the most popular classes at Princeton, which is called children's literature, English 336. Um, there are usually over 300 Princeton undergrads in, enrolled in the class, um, and it's basically a survey course of history of children's literature. And so I, I was seeing and interacting with a lot of really great and interesting materials. Um, and in addition to that, through my dissertation research, I come across a lot of fairy tales and other materials and archives that aren't published, but that are within the public domain. And so that was one way that I was thinking about the materials, but ideally what we're hoping for with the Readwell app as we continue to work on it is that it's going to have that it's it, it's going to have 50% children's classics and the be and the best of the classics that are kind of curated for our audience as well as 50% new proprietary original material. Um, so I've been also working with creative writers to create original new pieces of content as well. That's terrific. So this is different I mean from the the long Harry Potter series or the, the Lord of the Rings and, and other kind books of that ilk, I suppose, that have attracted these, these middle school kids before, right? Yeah, so you've identified exactly the types of middle grade 
reading that has gotten certain generations really excited about reading. Um, so in addition to, you know, we, we can't offer those books by copyright, but um, but we really target kind of shorter fiction is the types of books that we currently have on the app. We also have some longer titles, classics you might be familiar with, such as Alice in Wonderland or um, or other longer texts. Um, so yeah, exactly. It's, it's really the intention of the app is to get middle grade readers excited about the material and to show them that there is really great material out there. And um, the app really emphasizes quality over quantity because in the ebook space, there's a lot of decision fatigue since a lot of the apps offer so many choices for kids that they often sit there like, ah, like many of us on Netflix or <laughs> on other types of apps feeling daunted by having to make a choice. And so we really um, have identified key genres and key texts and we keep it to a limited number of texts so that it's easier to navigate and figure out what you would wanna read next. So step us through how you envision the, the app working. Will kids actually be reading on the app itself? Yeah, so it's it's a pretty, um, it has a really intuitive and standard UX UI design. Evidently, the kids in this age group are all digital natives, so they're really familiar with using these kinds of apps. But we also wanted to optimize our UI UX since a lot of the other competitors out there kind of have um, a little bit of a more confusing or less streamlined um, UX design. So basically, it's a standard e-reading app. It has ebooks that you can change the background color, the font size, so you can personalize it and adapt it for your reading style. And in addition to that, we really wanted to make the stories accessible to as wide an audience as possible. So we also offer audiobooks um, for all of our titles. Um, and, and that comes with like different tiers of membership. But um, you can even listen to a book while you're reading it, which studies show improve its literacy significantly and is one of the ways to really improve literacy in general and especially for that age group. Um, and we also offer um, keywords and genres. So you can click on genres that are particularly exciting to you, or you can search based on a keyword. For example, a kid who's really excited about dragons or I don't know, alligators can just search that keyword and we've developed a tagging system. We already have, I think over 700 keywords tagged so that based on the interest of the kid, they can really look for a title that would be exciting to them. And will there be more than just the text of the books? What other kinds of uh, content or uh, are, are you looking at including here? Um, for now, we're really looking at starting out with mostly books and audiobooks, but we'll see where we go from there as we, um, as we build will, will there be question, questions or other content, that kind of thing to get the kids thinking about what they've read, that, that type of thing? Yeah, that's, that's some of the directions we're thinking about going, but we initially just wanted to offer them the experience of, since kids are reading digitally more and more, of having a really great digital reading experience with both great, um, choices and a really great UX UI design. So step us through how it will work. The kids would download the app and then there's a subscription involved, which I guess yes. the parents might get involved with. Do you yes. have a target for when this might come about and what the pricing might be? Um, so basically um, there would be a basic, a standard and a premium in terms of the subscription rates, but exactly that you would download the app and you would um, be able to have a limited access for a free trial, either like a limited quantity of books um, or a limited amount of time that you can preview the contents. And then um, based on the subscription level you choose, you would have access to either, you know, solely the classics children's literature or a more premium subscription would consist of um, the original proprietary content that we produce as a part of the app. Um, right now, we are trying to code the back end of the app, and as a full-time PhD student, I have a lot on my plate, so we can't announce the exact rollout of when it will be available on the App Store, but you can certainly find us on our website and sign up for um, updates to see when you would be able to download the app as soon as it's ready. That, that's terrific. What, what is the website people can go to? It's um, www.letsreadwell.com. Terrific. What have you learned? I mean, you hinted at some just a second ago. What have you learned through this whole experience in, in trying to do this? 
Um, so as somebody, you know, I used to work in tech startups and my first job out of college, I was a second grade teacher. And then my second job out of college, I was working at an e-learning software startup in Zurich, Switzerland. Um, so I think it was really exciting for me to be able to work on a product where I could um, work at the intersection of my interests, technology, the arts, education. Um, and I had a lot of optimism about the project. I still do. Definitely being able to manage the app and the project. And I didn't realize how complex it was going to be to build this app. So that's been one learning for sure. Um, in addition to the fact that, you know, all the research that my team and I have done about literacy rates and about the products out there, it's been really interesting for me because it's not necessarily, I don't, you know, focus exclusively on children's literature and that education level um, or, or that, that area of education since I teach at the undergraduate level. So learning about that has been really interesting, especially, you know, seeing how kids' literacy rates dropped after COVID and the way that people are really reading more and more online. And as somebody who loves the physical product of books, I mean, I spend my time in archives a lot of the time, you know, transitioning towards a more, you know, tech-based way of reading. It, it really fascinates me, even though I, I will always emphasize that the physical book is a really amazing thing that we can never replace. Um, so yeah, so I guess in terms of that and in terms of my personal interests, it's been really exciting to work on as well as the fantastic resources I, you know, we, we got access to through the Keller Center and having to think commercially about some of my research and other interests. Terrific. Once again, the website, if you can give it to us. Sure. www.letsreadwell.com. Letsreadwell.com. Well, congratulations on, on what you're doing there. And we look forward to seeing the finished product. Kate Claremont, thank you for spending time with us. Thanks, Fred.